In this video, I'm going to tell you how to paint your models without fear. So I was at Gen Con about a month ago, and I did a lot of different things. But one thing I did was I had a very interesting conversation with an artist in the artist area, uh, and his name was Michael. And he and I had met, I think, the night before at uh, a painting event that was put on by Renegade uh, Games, and they were showing off the um, Power Rangers game. And so me and a bunch of other art folks were kind of hanging around and painting and things like that. I was painting a bad guy. I don't really know much about Power Rangers, as it turns out, a little bit after my time. But anyway, I met him and some other folks at this event, and he was familiar with the channel. And then the next day, I bumped into him again in the artist area where his booth was, and we were talking about a lot of stuff, but mainly about art. We were talking about some artists that we like in comic books and things like that. And uh, it, it, he mentioned something that really kind of resonated with me and I've thought about quite frequently since the conversation in early August. And uh, he talked about how um, certain artists can just just draw or, or illustrate or whatever without fear. And, uh, and I, I, I thought to myself at the time, I thought, well, yeah, I mean, it's not the end of the world, you're drawing, you know? But I think it goes deeper than that. People ask me in the comments very frequently, well, uh, you know, I want to get started painting, but I'm nervous about doing it, or I, I, I think I'm going to goof it up, or, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ruin the model. And that kind of mindset is kind of prevalent amongst beginners in pretty much any kind of hobby. Um, I remember when I was in college and I was taking a painting class, because I went to college for fancy dancy art and all that stuff, uh, I had a, kind of like a lockup on a painting. I was just like, I don't want to... I'm, I'm going to ruin it. I just don't think, and my professor at the time was like, it's just a canvas. You're, you're not going to ruin it. it. You know, worst comes to worst, we just gesso over it again and you start over. Now, for a lot of people, just starting over and doing it again is seen as a loss. And honestly, if you're trying to get better at something, it shouldn't. Having to do something, failing at it, and then having to do it again is basically the hallmark to getting better at any skill. When, when you start out, you generally always stink at whatever it is kind of skill you're trying to pick up, and then you get better at it with practice. This is not new to anybody, but the concept that I'm going to spend this time and do all this work and then not be able to get the thing, the, the result that I want, that, so a lot of people, they see that, especially in miniatures, as failure because they've got a very, uh, they've got a deadline. It's not a real deadline. It's not like I've got to have it done by the 38th of, of November or whatever. It's more of a, I need to get this on the table so I can play with it. You know, I, I want to get this on the table, and if I goof up, then I'm not going to get it on the table as quickly as I would like. Um, and that, you know, is a little valid for some people because some people only have so much time to get their playing done because they've got kids and family and whatever and work, and I understand that. But the idea is that work and practice failed is still never a failure. You're constantly getting better and moving forward. So when you're concerned about, geez, I just don't want to waste the time if I don't do it right the first time, understand, number one, you're not going to do it right the first time. Nobody does. That's not how skills work. You have to hone them over time and practice to get better. But number two, getting that stuff kind of figured out so that you can you know, move on to the next step is super important. And though you may not have a painted model on the tabletop as quickly as you'd like, you're still going to get better so that in the future you can get painted table painted models on the tabletop even quicker. Other folks mention a fear in miniature painting that, well, I'm going to buy these models and they're not cheap, you know, um, so I'm going to ruin it with my paint job and then I'm going to be out that 40, 50, 60 dollars or whatever, depending on the size and scale and company that you're buying your models from. And again, in that situation, kind of like my professor said, you know, the model, the, 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 it's not ruined. We can, we can cover it up again and, uh, and, and you can start the painting over again. Now, in this situation, I generally would not suggest to just prime over, you know, um, a, a failed paint job and start over. You can, especially if you're practicing. I would tell you it's generally better to, if you're, if you're using practice models that you don't really want to game with, if you, if you do it and you're not happy with it, you just prime over it. 
and then start over again. That's I think there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, you're going to lose some detail, but you're not trying to get finished stuff on the table. You're trying to practice. If you really want to, you can strip the models and go down that road uh, with these practice models, but you don't have to. If these are not practice models, these are things that you want in your army or in your warband or your crew or whatever, then if things go really pear-shaped and they just don't turn out or there's something really wrong, you generally can strip that paint off and then start over again. Worst case scenario is that something happens and you can't strip the paint off at all. Maybe you used something, I don't know, do they make paint out of titanium? Maybe they do. I mean, there's titanium white, but that's a different thing altogether. Lord knows I've bumped up against paints that I have found difficult to strip off of the model. Pachow. But generally, you can strip that stuff off. And in worst, worst, worst case scenario, you can probably buy another one. And admittedly, that's, you know, costly. You you have to spend some money or whatever. And sometimes it's an old model you can't find very easily anymore. So you can look on eBay. But it's not the end of the world. If you have found that you bought this one-off bust made by a hermit in Lithuania and you got it on, you know, from the internet or I don't know what the hermits in Lithuania are doing on the internet, but you get this bust and then you work on it, you work on it, you just ruin it just really bad. I don't even know how you could ruin something that bad. Um, and you can't strip it because if you put it in any kind of stripping solvent, it'll just eat the resin because it was mostly made out of hair from the hermit's beard. And it's a whole thing. You don't, don't buy busts from hermits is I guess rule number one. But Even in those situations, then you can at least say, okay, well, I guess I'll move on to a different project. Fear is the mind killer. There was a book called Dune uh, that has that line in it. And it's true. When I talk about motivation a lot on this channel, very frequently the motivation killer that I have to talk about how to get over that hump very frequently is fear. Sometimes it's being tired. Sometimes it's being bored. Sometimes it's being confused or lost or whatever. But most of the time, it is fear of failure that ends up kind of killing your motivation. So when you have started to learn that it's not the end of the world if I goof this up, I'll at least learn some things. It's not the end of the world if I goof this up, I can strip it and start over again. It's not the end of the world if I goof this up, I can buy another box of stormtroopers or whatever you can then start to paint with no fear, or at the very least, hopefully less fear, to be able to work towards getting to the point where you try new things. You decide, you know what, on this, I'm gonna try maybe some blending. Now, I will tell you right off the bat that if you're gonna try a totally new technique, very frequently it's a better idea to practice on something that you don't care about as much, because when you practice on something you don't care about as much, then much of the fear goes away. If it's something you have absolutely no plans to put on the table, there should be no fear at all because all you're doing at that point is maybe wasting some paint and wasting some some time. And again, as I've said earlier in this video, I don't think either of those things is a waste when you are learning by doing. Learning by just watching videos or reading blog posts and things like that is useful, but the really important thing is to sit down and get brushed to paper and or to plastic and make it happen because those types of things are really important for growing as a painter. So hopefully you can understand that much of what is maybe killing your motivation in some situations, uh, maybe what is causing you to not want to try to branch out with newer techniques and things like that, which is you know really giving you trepidation about even buying sometimes new models, understand that that's fear. And that fear is frankly unfounded because if you spend the time to try to paint these models and it doesn't work out, again, it's not the end of the world. You can start over. You can buy new models if you have to, but strip them first. See how that works out. Because honestly, stripping models is a skill in itself. Getting the paint off of these models um, and using the right fluids and the right techniques and things like that. And how long do I soak it with this stuff? And should I use a toothbrush or should I use a you know a little uh, toothpick or whatever to get in the nooks and crannies? That's a skill in itself. And once you've learned that, you can then start looking at places like eBay to buy a bunch of stuff, maybe strip it, clean it up, repaint it, and have a lot of good times with that and also save yourself some money. So when you start to think, yeah, I'm just, I, I don't know, that, 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 that thing, that that whole idea, that you know, emotion, that mm, I don't know, that's fear right there. Mm, that's fear. So think about that, understand it, recognize it, and then try to figure out ways to kind of bypass it some way and understand that 
if you fail, it's okay. You can keep going and you'll be learning from your mistakes.